Hey, it's Aaron. Um, today I want to give a, a kind of a quick virtual tour and rundown of the New York International Auto Show. It opened to the press last week on Wednesday and uh, opened to the public on Friday, I think it was. Uh, the show runs from March 29th to April 7 this year. Uh, that is uh, kind of the norm for the show. It's at the Javits Center, which is in downtown New York. Um, it's the New York show is the one of the largest shows internationally and uh, the largest show in the U.S. in terms of foot traffic. So. Um, the show this year was different than it has been in the past. There are some automakers who pulled out or downsized greatly, uh, and there's others who took advantage of that and expanded a lot. There's also a very, very large uh, aftermarket and modification um, garage at this show, so way more classic collectible and uh, just downright cool vehicles being shown as enthusiasts show off and companies around them show off what they can do. So uh, I will get into, I'll start out with the new stuff. So the stuff that was unveiled at this show that was brand new, and then we'll get into kind of the show overall. This is mostly going to be a slideshow, uh, so you know I'll I'll just be using photos I took of the show. I didn't really have time or the equipment to be filming uh, for you know presentation like this, so uh, I was focused on photography. So I will show that instead of film and me talking. Anyway, uh, let's start with what unveiled at the show this year. The biggest unveil in terms of brand new stuff and concepts comes from Genesis. Genesis is Hyundai's luxury brand. They unveiled not only a whole performance brand uh, for them, which is the Magma brand, uh, which showed four vehicles, uh, or three, three vehicles as part of that unveil. Um, so they had a GV60, which will be the first to be released under this new uh, performance performance brand. They had the G80, um, which will be the second to be, uh, to come out of this brand. And then they had a, I'm trying to remember what they called it, the X Berlinetta concept, I think, which is a purely conceptual vehicle. Uh, but it shows what the brand could do if they decided to make a supercar. Genesis also unveiled a fully new concept called the Neo Loon. This is a three row full sized SUV. It is fully electric. And the coolest thing about it is that they embraced that uh, SUV mentality. It is a big vehicle and they did not try to hide that. A lot of cool stuff like the lighting being integrated to the uh, vehicle body instead of being separate pieces that uh, kind of bolt on. And the interior with the uh, pillarless, uh, so no B pillar, so pillarless interior with the doors opening opposite each other and a full look at the insides. This is 100% a concept. It will not be made, uh, but it is a really, really cool thing. Also unveiling at the show was Hyundai. Hyundai showed off the new designs for the uh, Hyundai Tucson and the Santa Cruz, which are very related products. Uh, the new design incorporates a new grille, some changes to lighting in the front, uh, changes at the rear section, and a bunch of interior upgrades. Uh, the interior sees a more wraparound kind of uh, infotainment slash uh, driver information display. Uh, so a big kind of uh, wraparound look, which is very nice and very easy to use from the, from the seating perspective. And then the Santa Cruz itself got a new XRT off-road model. Uh, Hyundai learned a bunch from participating in the Rebel Rally for two years. They finished both years and learned a lot about off-roading in that particular vehicle and used that to upgrade the, the Santa Cruz in the XRT package with things like 
uh, integrated tow hooks, uh, better underbody and body protection, uh, improved suspension, way better tires than what the standard model comes with in terms of going off-road, and a few other details that really make this a kind of light or maybe medium-duty off-road uh, machine. Pretty, pretty cool. While not necessarily unveils, uh, there were way more Bentley vehicles at the New York show than there are in the norm. Uh, that's because dealerships are getting more and more active, and uh, Bentley itself had a really cool custom one-off model that had been that was decorated by what's his name, Stephen Wiltshire, a very prominent uh, New York area artist and really cool uh, look to that one and then there are just a bunch of other Bentleys on display all over the place. Moving on we'll just go kind of in alphabetical order as you're walking the show floor. Uh, Chevrolet uh, General Motors itself was pretty quiet at this show. Uh, the Buick, GMC, and so on displays were very small, uh, but the Chevrolet display was huge. There was a lot of stuff. Uh, there was a Police Pursuit Blazer electric vehicle, so the Blazer EV had the Police Pursuit model there. Uh, there was a regular Blazer, and then there were just a bunch of trucks, cars, and SUVs. Chevy was really pushing the electrical side of things. Uh, that's kind of been, been a GM focused and Chevy has been the brand that they have promoted that through the most. So lots of that there. Moving next door, there was Ford. A uh, pretty good sized presence at Ford. Kind of split 50-50 between the Ford consumer side and the uh, the Ford commercial side. So uh, commercial vehicles were a big part of Ford's display this year. And very cool to see that. Honda uh, had a slightly smaller presence than usual, but still a good sized booth. Honda was showing off a lot of really cool stuff, including a New York, New York Jets tribute uh, Honda Ridgeline tr wrapped truck, and also a couple of options for the Civic Type R little performance car. Uh, lots of pretty good stuff in the Honda booth. Going back to Hyundai, uh, the previous Previously unveiled Palisade, uh, the brand new 2025 model, is on display in a couple of iterations at the New York show. Also, pretty much every Hyundai vehicle made is there. So if you need to kick the tires on something, Hyundai's got a giant booth. Jeep doesn't have a big presence inside the show floor, so on the actual uh, inside the Javits Center, there is not a whole lot of stuff to look at from Jeep or any of the Stellantis brands like Dodge and so on. But Jeep has their giant Jeep experience track outside. So if you go outside, it dominates. It's this huge thing that uh, you can go way up in the air. There's It articulates all over the place. It's a ride-along thing that is really, really cool and a lot of fun. I've seen it at several auto shows. The New York one is bigger than usual because it's outside. Space is pretty much unlimited. Jumping over to Lexus, the Lexus booth has a bunch of stuff. Uh, kind of front and center is the new GX. This just released just about a month ago or so, and uh, they have two or three uh, renditions of it out there, including a very outdoor off-road version, a very street-friendly family uh, getting around in luxury version, and so on. Then uh, there's also the Lexus GT race car and a couple of other things that are really cool to see. Worth going over there. Nissan has a pretty good sized booth. It's about the size you see from Nissan at most places. They have pretty much all of their product on display. A whole lineup of uh, little Frontier pickup trucks, which is really cool to see because there are a lot of color and package options for that truck. So it's cool to see a lineup like that. There's a big, really neat display of the GTR, which is, of course, their supercar. Godzilla is being shown in Nismo and uh, standard formats. There's also the all new as of last year, Versa, uh, which is worth a look because the Versa is a much improved little car. Reviewed it a couple of times now. Really well done there. Next door to that, or right behind it, I think, if you, depends on 
where you're standing, I guess, uh, is the Subaru booth. Subaru has this huge outdoor looking display. Uh, they, their brand pushes going out and doing stuff and being out there. And that is definitely front and center in their display. Lots of, uh, projections of foliage and vehicles parked on top of stuff and tilted on rocks and whatever. Uh, lots of good stuff in that regard. Also, Around the back side on one end, you will find the Hoonigan Rally Machine. Uh, this is Subaru's awesome, <laughs> awesome little rally car. Also, uh, as is always featured at Subaru, is a collaborative booth where Subaru collaborates with local no-kill animal shelters and brings puppies and dogs and stuff that you can go in and hold and play with and pet and hang out with. Really, really cool to see that. Not far away from, from Subaru is Toyota. Toyota has a pretty decent sized display. It's actually fairly large, but there's a lot of space between the vehicles, giving you plenty of chance to open the doors, fiddle around with things, look at them, play with them, do whatever. Almost everything Toyota makes is there. Uh, it's worth noting that Toyota has a, uh, a really cool uh, wheelchair basketball setup so you can go in and you can play basketball from a wheelchair um, there is also a really cool uh, display of the uh, new uh, Prius so the current generation Prius which won a world car award uh, at the New York show there is uh, just a fair amount of really good stuff to see at Toyota. Right next to that is Volkswagen. Most of the Volkswagen booth, well, it's a good size. Most of the attention is on the new ID Buzz uh, electric van. Uh, there's just was constant crowds around that thing. Right next to it is a 1949 Beetle, the first generation Beetle, um, on a big prominent stage display. And for some reason it was being ignored. I thought it was the coolest thing, one of the coolest things at the show without going downstairs. Really, really neat to see that sort of heritage. Also, uh, Volkswagen has a virtual drive setup where you can remote control some little RC cars. Out in front of the show as you enter, there's a big track with these RC cars that are probably maybe, I don't know, 16 inches long, give or take, um, as Subaru, uh, Volkswagen models, and they have a camera on the front. From the booth, from the Volkswagen booth inside the show, which is a couple hundred yards away, is a virtual drive where you are seeing that camera point of view on the screen and you're racing that little car against somebody else who's sitting next to you uh, around that track. So you can both watch the cars racing on the track itself and see a projection on a screen there of the drivers or you can go and watch the drivers as they drive and see what they're seeing on the big screens in front of them. Really neat. Um, this has been at several auto shows. I've seen it three or four times now, and it is a lot of fun. Downstairs from the show is an EV test track. So this is fully enclosed inside because it's electric vehicles. They don't give off emissions. So uh, it's a big test track. Several manufacturers have collaborated and uh, there's a couple of uh, track options and you can take any of the cars there and drive them around that track uh, and get a feel for what an electric vehicle is like. There's also little kind of classes and symposiums where they will explain the charging process and other stuff um, and some of the nuances involved with EVs. Really, really cool little setup and well worth going to check out. Right next door to that is a huge garage. That garage as the downstairs is the modified and aftermarket. Down there you will see uh, you will see a company that just does lighting. So they have all this really cool puddle and other lighting, like wheel lighting and stuff, on a bunch of different display vehicles that include like Lamborghinis and so on. Uh, You'll see a long lineup of Mopar Modifieds, uh, street rods and stuff, all along one wall of the downstairs down there. Uh, you'll also see lineups of a bunch of JDM vehicles, so uh, 
Probably my favorite amongst those was a, a Toyota, what's the name of those? Toyota Lee something. Anyway, it's a GTV. So it's a very beautiful red car. Uh, they made those only for a few years and they're just really pretty. Uh, there's another, there's a lineup of, of Toyotas behind it in various years and model types. Um, all kind of street mods and restorations and so on. You'll see Subarus in the same vein, Honda in the same vein, and so on. Lots of really cool stuff like that. Then if you're into classics, especially Latino street mod classics, there are several options. Uh, I saw at least three Impalas and uh, a handful of other similar uh, makes and years. Uh, you're talking about, at this point, we're talking about the 1960s mostly. You'll just some beautiful work, uh, scroll work, mirrored hoods, all that kind of stuff. Really, really neat stuff. There's also a golden Volkswagen Bug. This has been at this show pretty much every year for probably the last decade. Uh, it's a beautiful Volkswagen Bug, uh, first generation, that has been painted gold. It's just really cool looking. Um, there's a lot of other stuff down there too. So uh, just dozens of cars. There's probably about over a hundred cars easy down in the Modifieds area. Lots of really, really cool things. If you want your car jacked way up or your truck, or if you want, uh, you want to slam down to the ground, or if you want it somewhere in between that, if you want to race it, if you want to show it off at car shows, if you want to bounce it around on air, if you, <laughs> whatever you are into, there are people down there that are doing it and you can go check it out. It's really, really cool. Probably for me, the best part of the show. So that's pretty much it. That is the New York show in a very fast slideshow nutshell. So that's what I've got. This has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon.